हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन दी कॉम्प्लेक्स एनालिसिस टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट आइडेंटिटी थ्यूरम माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर हरीश कर आई विल कवर ऑल दोज क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द ईयर टू थाउंड इलेवन टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री यू कैन सिंपली फॉलो माई यूट्यूब चैनल वेर यू कैन फाइंड द पी वाई क्वेश्चन सीरीज एंड द प्ले लिस्ट इज द सी एस आर यू जी सी नेट आई आई टी जैम हेयर यू कैन सी द पी वाई क्वेश्चन सीरीज रिलेटेड टू द वेरियस टॉपिक्स ऑफ द लास्ट ट्वेल्व ईयर्स एज वेल एज द गेट एग्जामिनेशन लाइक मोबिस ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन प्रॉपर बाउंडेड रीमन calculus of variations and many more are there you can also see some lectures related to the testing of hypothesis that is a statistics portion is also available in this complete py question series so the objective of this we will cover all those 25 plus questions from the csr net examination with the help of shortcut tricks related to the identity theorem we will cover the part b and the part c all type of the question from this series whenever you want to learn the concept of the identity theorem your target is to check whether the function f of z that's a complex function of the complex variable is constant or not whenever you have a you whenever you appear for the csr net or gate examination and in in any of the question if you feel that they will ask you f of z is a constant or not it means you have to apply the identity theorem how we can think about this let me firstly recall some of the concepts some of the shortcut tricks for you and then we will solve each questions within a 15 second time period so you have the two theorems one is called as liability theorem and second is the identity theorem if you have a bounded function plus if you have the entire function then that function is always be a constant function what is the opposite of this if you have the non constant function then it is a non bounded that is called as the unbounded function remember always whenever in any question they are talking about the non constant entire function you always take the counter example of this this is a non constant entire function so whenever in any of the question they are asking you let uh, if f of z is a non constant entire function you can start from here so that you can get your answer in a very simple manner if you want to prove that a function is a constant or not as i told you the identity theorem whenever the question in the complex analysis will ask you whether f of z is a constant or not you always apply the identity and the liouville theorem sir so if either of the property is satisfied means if you prove f is a constant if u or v either of them is a bounded or if you prove f is a bounded if you prove the linear combination of u and v is my bounded above or below make sure f must be the entire it means if you prove entire plus something then it is my constant and what is that something either of these properties will satisfy on the other hand if you have the identity theorem what is the identity theorem if f is analytic function in some domain d then you can find the set of all those zeros of the f and find the limit point if the limit point is belongs to the domain then you can say f is my zero that is a constant otherwise not for example here fine so you can see what is the meaning of this f of z is zero it means this what is the limit point of here what is the limit point of 1 over n it's zero if zero belongs to my domain whatever the domain let's say my domain is collection of all those zs such that mod of z is less than 1 so clearly say this belongs to this it means what we can say is f of z is my zero that is f is my constant function similarly for here if i found the limit point limit point is zero again it belongs to the domain then you can say it is my constant instead of that instead of the zero if you have some another function like f and g if the limit point of the f limit point of the g if the limit point of f and g both are belongs to the d then you can say f minus zero or you can say f is equal to g one of the most important theorem is the picard's theorem what is the picard's theorem is if you have the non constant entire function fine if it omits more than one point fine or you can say if you have entire function if edit more than two values or two value then it is a constant or you can say if f is the entire function such that a or b which are not equal and f a or b does not belongs to the f of c then f is my constant how you can explain this for example here 
I assume f is my non-constant entire function such that this property hold. What does it means? It means what does it mean? It means f of z omits all those values which are less than of the z. How many values they have? How many values? It has more than it has more than two values. So it means f is my constant by using the Picard theorem because it has uncountably many values which x which remove less than of the z values the last concept is if you have the entire function and the singularity at infinity is a pole means if i say z approaches infinity if it is a pole it means this value must be infinity so if f is my entire plus if f is my entire then this implies f is my polynomial fine it may not be in it is not a con constant but it is a polynomial the last concept is if you have the entire function and if you prove that limit z approaches infinity fz over z is 0 or fz over z raised to power n is 0 then f is my constant in this case while in this case f is my polynomial of degree less than or equal to n minus 1 if you look at that if i take n is 1 in this case then it becomes here what will happen it is degree less than equal to 0 what is the meaning of that it is my constant function now based on these simple tips i can solve all those 25 plus question within a fraction of second always remember whenever you have a complex analysis question draw the diagram f is analytic function defined on the open unit disk so this is my open unit disk i consider the radius is my one then f is constant now whenever the question is asking related to the constant fine you always look for the identity theorem or you always look for the picard's theorem or you always look the way i can solve in this lecture so what is that if i solve this first part f of n is zero f is constant what is the limit point of this what is the limit point of one over n which is zero and 0 is what is the feasible domain is this is my feasible domain fine and you can see the limit point of 1 by n is 0 and 0 is inside the domain so that means f is this implies f is my constant so this is the correct option look at this one what is the limit point of this so since f of z is 0 for all those here z is my half so this is my z is half circle whose radius is half Again, you can see the limit point is my 0 is inside this half. So definitely this is also the constant. Look at this one. f of 1 over n square is my 0. What is the limit point of this? Limit point is my 0. So is this also a part of this? Yes, it also belongs to here. Look at this one. What is the limit point of this? So limit point of the z is my 1. And 1 does not belong to the d because it is a open disk so you can see one is not belongs to the d it is not constant so you can see the right options are my a b and c are the right answers. look at this another one f is my entire function it is already given to you f is constant now whenever f is constant given to you apply the picard's theorem or the identity theorem if a zero set contain the sequence the first option is what is the limit point of a n what is the limit point of this is zero and since domain is my complete so zero belongs to my complete d so yes it is a constant what is the limit point of this now we all know minus one of this it is lies between minus one to plus one so what is the limit point of this zero limit point of this is zero so the limit point of this is zero it belongs to the domain of this so that means yes it is a constant what is the limit point of this as clearly say the limit point of 1 over 2n is my 0 and it's a part of this domain so yes it is my constant look at this one a n it is n when 4 does not divides 4 does not divides m so it means it will be of the 4m plus 1 or 4m plus 2 or 4m plus 3 and it is 1 over n if 
n 4 divides n it means it will be of in this case so what the, what does it means so clearly say from this case we will we get a subsequence you can see we get a subsequence of 1 over n and what is the limit point of this limit point of this is 0 which is in the log of d so that means this function is also constant so we can get a b c d all are my correct option because we get a subsequence of 1 by n look at this another one f is the c to c is the entire function given and then which of the following is there so again a very simple what is that this is 1 over n squared what is the limit point of this limit point of this is 0 limit point of this is again 0 and 0 is the part of this c and this 0 is the part of this c what does it means it means f is my constant fine but can you say f is my constant no sorry f is not a constant because this is my n square so it means definitely f is my defined function fine because the limit point of both the case belongs to my domain and the core domain so no such f exists is a cancel out such an f is not unique so we will see so how you can do a uh, very simple you can take z is 1 over n so what is my function z is here it is my n z square fine and you can see we will get only the one function as a z square so it is a unique function so it's a correct option f need not be a polynomial that's a wrong because we get a unique function and it must be of the quadratic polynomial so the right answer is my c is the correct option if this is a zero then only you can say f is a constant but if this is a non-zero then we can say this is my well-defined function or another way is you can see a function is defined to be here if i consider g of z is my z square then what is my f minus g of 1 over n so what is the f of 1 by n is 1 over n square g of 1 by n is again 1 by n square now it's a 0 fine so what is the limit point of this 0 which is the part of the domain it means f minus g is my constant fine or it means f minus g is my 0 or f is equal to g so that's why either way you can approach here this way but i will always recommend it you can put up in a very simple map okay look at this one f is the open disk so you can draw the diagram f is a unit open disk so that means this is my unit open disk minus 1 to plus 1 center is my 0 then what is the s f of 1 over 2n which is equal to 1 over 2n now what is the limit point of this limit point is my 0 and 0 is the 0 belongs to the domain what is the limit point of this limit point of this is also 0 and it's also the part of the domain so what is the meaning of that you can put z is because it's a non-zero so that it means f is not a constant so i can take z is 1 over n or z is 1 over 2n so what is the meaning of that f of z is my here fine on the other hand if i look about the t okay firstly we can see so collection of all those f and you can see this is my function now what is the s it's a it's a unique function fine so once it's a unique function then what is the s s is collection of all those z only z will be here so what is the then both s so what is that what is the cardinality of this it's my singleton fine so he said s is empty fine s and t is empty fine now look at the uh, capital t capital t is a function of 1 over 2n is f of 1 over 2n plus 1 which is equal to 1 over 2n what is the limit point of this 0 is a part of the domain limit point of 0 is the part of the domain limit point of the 0 is a part of the range of this f now once you have this it means definitely f exists fine so what is those f if i consider the first two case first and the last case then i can take z is 1 over 2n so then it will be this one however if i consider this case 
then I can consider Z is my say 1 over 2n plus 1 then this function will be this is what is the 1 over 2n value so I can found the value of the 1 over 2n is 2n is my 1 over z minus 1 so 1 over 2n will be 1 over this and here so clearly say you have the two different functions f is there f is this it means it is not unique one so you can see in the previous question he said f is not a unique function so because in this case we get only the one function f of z is z scale that's why this option is cancelled but if it this question say uh, t is not unique f belongs to the t is not unique then it again it's a correct option now what is that then you have to consider what is the meaning of that now if i clear this screen what is that on this case you get f of z is my z also you get f of z is my z over 1 minus z so clearly say is there any f can you find any f which satisfy both the condition at the same time there is no f exist which satisfied both the condition at the same time it means f is my phi so what is that capital t will be my empty set so capital t is my empty fine and singleton is a wrong so right option is my b is the right answer look at this another one which of the following is a is a domain which of the following is there which of the following is my so you can draw the diagram again it's an open one i can draw this open minus one to plus one for each pair of this now what is the limit point of this zero limit point of this is a zero both belongs to this domain so it means i can take z is 1 over n so what is my function f of z is z square so that's a unique function so you can see yes it exists if we look about that what is the limit point of this limit point of this is 1 which is not belongs to the domain because it's a unit circle it's an open unit circle so we can't say it is a correct option why because the limit point does not satisfy this domain property although although if you take this is my here then clearly say this will satisfy but the limit point of this is not the part of the domain so that's why this option is cancel out so there is no need to solve like this way just find the limit point find the limit point of this limit point is my zero limit point is my zero so it means both are satisfied so what you can do so you can see if uh, okay if it is 1 over n it depending on minus 1 so if it is n is even then here and minus 1 over n if n is odd so if i simply take z is my 1 over n so what is my function function is either z or minus z if n is my even and n is my odd but clearly say this function is not exist because there is no value of, there is no function which satisfy both the property at the same time so what is that he said it cannot satisfy yes it cannot satisfy limit point of this is zero is belong to the domain limit point of this is again a zero is also the part of the domain of this range of this f but he said cannot satisfy so that's we will see if i take z is my one over n so it will be what is the value of the n is my 1 over z here so you can see it is my unique value so it means there exists but he said cannot so this option is cancelled a and c are my correct option now look at this one so again whether such function exists or not so it's an analytic function what is the limit point of this zero is a part of the domain what is the limit point of this it is half and half is a part of this codomain. fine so it means definitely the function exists whether it's a unique or not so no function exists is a cancel out then you can take z is my 1 over n what is the my f of z so i can take n is my 1 over z it's a 2 over z plus 1 so it is 1 over 2 plus z fine this is my here 
So now what is the f of 0? f of 0 is my half satisfied. f has a simple pole at z is equal to minus 2. Fine. What is the f of 2? You can see 1 over 4 is also the correct option. a, b and c are my correct option. You can see how many seconds you are needed to solve the problem. A very simple. Just look over the simple rule which I told you in up to so far. And look at that how many shortcut tricks I told you the rest of the video. F is analytic function in the unit disk. So whenever it's a unit disk, it's an open unit disk because the equality is not there. So it's a minus 1 to plus 1. F of 1 over n is 1 over 2n minus 1. Then f of 0, f is a constant. Now you can see. Whenever this is a constant function is asking you, we can apply the identity theorem always. So look at that. Limit point of this, 0, which is a part of the domain. Limit point of this, 0, which is a part of this, because f is the mapping from capital D to C, and C belongs to, 0 belongs to the C. So it means the function exists. Fine? So is there that? No. So now, whether it's a constant or not, we can't say that. If, if my function is my here, then the limit point is 0, which belongs to the domain, then we can say f is my constant. But here, it is a, not a 0. So we can't say it's a constant. We will see. Then, if I take f, z is my 1 over n. So then what will happen? It is f of z. It is 1 over 2 over this. Fine. This is my function. Now look at the option. f of 0 is my 0. Satisfied. f has no singularity. Is it? You can see whether f has a singularity or not. I think it, you can easily verify it. Whether f has a singularity or not. So f has z is equal to 2 is my simple pole. Fine. So f is a single pole but he said no singularity is a wrong option. Is f is a constant function? No. Is f is a constant? No, f is not a constant function. So the right answer is my a and c are my correct option, uh, correct option for this problem. Look at this. Now you can simply scan and join my WhatsApp group if you find more interesting and the conceptual knowledge. Look at this one. f is a non-constant analytic function. So what you can do? You can simply take e raised to power z. Which of the following conditions can apply to satisfy by f? First of all, you can see, I can find the limit point of this, 0. 0 is the part of this domain. Fine. What is the f limit point of this? Again a 0 is again the part of this domain. What is the limit point of this? 0 again is a part of this. So definitely the function exists. Whether it's a unique or not, we will see. So if I take the first pair and the last pair, what is my f of z? If I take z is my 1 over n, so it is my z square. If I take the second pair, if I again z is my this, z, the, in that case, if I take z is my minus 1 over n, then the value of n will be minus 1 over z. So again, it will be here. So clearly say it is my unique number. Fine. So definitely which is a possible satisfied. Yes, it's satisfied. Look at the second. Limit point of this is 0. Limit point is 0. Limit point is my 0. All are part of the domain and core domain. Now for this, if I take z is my 1 over n, then f of z will be z over 2 plus z. If I look at the second case, if I take z is my minus 1 over n, then what is my z? It is 1 over minus 2 plus z over z. So clearly say they are the two different function. It means there is no function f which satisfied both the functions at the same time. It means does not exist. It means the function does not exist. Now you can see again the limit point is my 0 satisfied. Limit point of this is 0, again satisfied. But now you have to prove this for all n. f is my non-constant entire function. Fine. Now, because they are not equality, once they are not equality, you can't apply the this rule. So I can simply take n is my 1. Because he said for all n. 
so what is the left hand side it is f of 1 is it less than of 2 raised to power minus 1 means here so what is the f of 1 e is it e less than 1 wrong because e is my here it can never be less than of 1 1, 1 by 2.5 is a wrong option look at the second again if i take n is my 1 the left hand side is my 1 right hand side is e raised to power 1 and this will be my 2 over 1 so is it true 2.178 is less than of 2 this is satisfied but this is not satisfied hence this option is also cancelled a is my right answer of this problem always remember whenever you are talking about the limit point and its equality you can always apply by this method okay now you can see f is a constant is asking you so we can apply this simple rule what is given to you limit z approach is 0 f of 1 over z is my infinity fine what is the meaning of this infinity at z is 0 it means it has pole so it means singularity is my pole fine also the function is given to you as entire function is given you as a entire so whenever z is 0 this value becomes my infinity so singularity at infinity is my pole so what is the shortcut to x as i mentioned you earlier singularity at infinity is my pole plus the function is entire f is necessary a polynomial fine f is necessary be a polynomial fine now look at that so whether f is a constant it's a polynomial so it means f is not constant f has infinitely many zero but once f is my polynomial every polynomial has finitely many zeros has finitely many zeros so, but the second option said if it has infinitely many zeros f can have at most finitely many zeros correct option f is necessary nowhere vanish that's a wrong option if i simply take z minus 1 is a polynomial so clearly says f of 1 is 0 but he said nowhere so this option is also cancelled fine there is one more option one more method so now look at that if i look at that f is the entire function can you think any of the function such that when you take z is 0 it becomes infinity so definitely if i take because it's a 1 over z so if i simply take this is my z so what is that limit limit z approaches infinity f of 1 over z is my z or you can say z plus a any of the constant so clearly say this value will be my infinity because this value is 1 over z plus a so it satisfied this condition now what is that this is my is it a constant no is it infinitely many zero no it has a finite zeros that is a minus a satisfied nowhere vanish it's a wrong option because it vanishes at minus of a i can take z is minus one as well so that's a simple both way you can apply in either of them okay now you can see again the question is constant related so we can solve in this manner f is a function which is defined as f square plus f dash square is one f is given to the entire which of the following conditions are true for this very simple f is a limit point and then so on okay what will happen either x or f okay fine what is that if x is a limit point then f is a constant what kind of the limit point we needed if f is a limit point if i prove f is my bounded uh, entire function plus bounded if you prove if you prove f is my bounded plus entire is already given to you then by limit theorem it is my constant so can you prove f is my constant first of all can you find any of the f which satisfied this property so clearly say if i simply take f is my sin z so what is the here this is sin square z what is the second first derivative is cos z so it's a cos square z which is one it's satisfied it means f will be my sin z 
or you can take as a cost jet so clearly says this option is cancelled because it value is lies between minus 1 to plus 1 but he said plus 1 minus 1 so this property cancel out now look at this option if x is my limit point what is the meaning of the limit point is collection of all those x it is my here fine if x has a limit point it means this is part is belong to my domain if x is my limit point what does it means f dash is zero it means f is my constant fine and he said this is a correct option if y is my limit point it means this will satisfy can you find any of the f which satisfied this property again you can see i can take f is my sin z what is the second derivative of this is a minus sin z plus sin z is my zero so it's satisfied but you can see f is a sin z which satisfied this property so f dash is my constant but f dash is not constant so this is my correct option here either x or y has the limit point how you can prove that whether x or y has a limit point okay so it is given to you as f square plus f dash square is my one we can differentiate this 2f f dash is a 2f dash f double dash is my zero fine so 2 will be cancelled f dash is a common f plus f double dash is my zero now what is given to you f is my entire function fine and we all know if f is entire f dash f double dash f triple dash all are my also entire function so it means this is my entire function this is my entire function product of the two entire function will be zero if and only if when either this has the limit point or this has the limit fine product of the two entire function will be zero if either first function will be the zero as a limit point or second function will be the zero so what is that if this happen if this is my x this happen this is my y so it means either x or y is my limit point so this option is also correct a and c are my correct option always remember whenever there is a question related to the constant you always think like here okay now again look at that it's a equality and the function is this we can firstly draw the diagram it's a unit open disk this is my unit open disk minus 1 2 plus 1 so what is the limit point of this the limit point of this is my 0 and it's a part of this domain what is the limit point of this if you take as n approaches infinity limit point is my 2 over 3 and which belongs to my c so definitely because it's equality so we can say the function exists fine but he said no function exists because there is only one relation so you can take z is 1 over n what is my f of z i can found the value of n is 1 over z 3 over z plus 1 so what is that it's a 2 over 3 plus z fine so you can see there is a one unique function here so definitely it's a unique function so no function x is a cancel out f of 0 2 by 3 satisfied what is the pole of this minus 3 is the pole of this and it's a simple pole fine f of 3 what is f of 3 is 2 over 6 1 over 3 is also satisfied so a b and c are my correct options look at this one this is a gate examination so whatever whether it's a gate or the csr net the concept remain the same you can solve the gate nbhm tfer csr net each of the way by using the same concept what is the domain is s s is the mapping is the open disk center is zero radius is my minus three or plus three fine and c is my here the function is given to you as 1 plus root 2 over n iota and it's a 2 over n square what is the limit point of this as n approaches infinity this value will be 1 and it's a part of this domain 1 is lies here it's a part of this domain what is the limit point of this 
limit point of this is by 0 and 0 is the part of this C. Fine. So it means we can say the function exists. Now your target is to find here. I can take Z is 1 over this is my here. Then I can found the value of n. So Z minus 1 over root 2 is iota over n. So uh, what is the value of the n? It is root 2 over z minus 1 iota. I can substitute this value here. What is the f of z? 2 over n square. So 2 iota square z minus 1 square. So what is that? It's a minus 1. It's a, it's a cancel out. So it will be my minus z minus 1 whole square. Now you have to find the f of root 2. What is the f of root 2? Minus, basically we can take as a modular sign, there is no issue. So it will be my 2 plus 1 minus 2 root 2. So I can skip this portion because I have to take the modulus value. So what is that? This will be my 3 minus 2 root 2. So where is the 3 minus? 3 minus A is my correct answer of this problem. You can skip this uh, imaginary part because it's a it's always a modulus value so you can see is i plus scale you can skip that and so on so a is my correct answer look at this another one again as a non-constant analytic function fine you can draw the domain of this it's an open disk it's open unit disk one minus one again it's a gate examination again i told you whether it's a gate or net is the same problem. No issue about that. Conceptual remain is the same. There exists a non-analytic function. When there exists a non-constant function, what is the limit point of this? Minus 1 over root n. I can say it's iota divided by root n. So what is the limit point of this? 0. 0 is the part of this domain. So it means this is my constant function because right hand side is 0. So this is my constant but we need a non-constant what is the limit point of this limit point of this is my one it is not belongs to the domain because it's an open disk so this is my non-constant what is the limit point of this zero zero is the part of the domain so this is my constant cancel out what is the limit point of this limit point of this is half which is the part of the domain so this means this is again a constant but we need a non-constant so this option is cancelled b is my correct option again it's a gate examination 2016 dn is a sequence of the distinct point of the open disk zero uh, radius is my one center is my zero and limit zn is my zero as n approaches infinity Consider the following statement, there exists a unique analytic function f such that this is my sign of zn. Fine, there is again because it's a sequence. It's, so can you find the limit point of zn? How you can find the limit point of the zn? By taking n approaches here. Fine, you can see how you find the limit point of this. I take the limit and approaches infinity of this portion so same i can do here inside portion is this what is the limit point of this this value is given to zero this is the part of domain what is the limit point of this you can take the limit of sine zn as n approaches infinity so this is my sine of zero is my zero and zero is the sequence from the domain to c and this belongs to here. So what does it means? There exists a, can you find a unique function? Yes, this is the unique function. Fine, because you can get a sequence. So you can say z is my sin z is the requirements. So it's a unique, it's a true statement. So only q is a false, neither p nor is it false. Now look at the q. There exists an analytic function f on the close, on this domain such that f of zn is 0 if n is my even and 1 if n is my odd. So what is that? What is the limit point of zn? 
the midpoint is my 1 which is not belongs to this domain it means it is not constant fine but there is a exist analytic function you can't find the exist analytic function because you have the two different pairs for the even and odd so it means this false is my false statement so both k1 is a correct false only p is my right look at this another one again in the options they are talking about the constant function so we can use this same method to solve this problem f is my here g is a complete circle is a complete complex number g is defined to be fz minus z plus 1 where z is which of the following is there okay very simple if i look at this option what is the limit point of this limit point is 0 which is a part of this domain so what is the meaning of that f is constant fine so what is the option is f is a constant correct option look at the second option f of n is my 0 so what is the zeros what is the limit point of this so clearly say limit point is my infinity which is not the part of the domain because it's when it will be the domain if it is written that it's an extended domain extended complex domain but it is not given that it means it's not the part of the domain so it is not constant function if f of 1 by n is there then g is a constant now you have to find the limit point of g what is the g is my here fine so if g is a constant so i can take any of the subsequence what is the g of 1 by n this is f minus 1 over n plus 1 and it is given that if both are same so this value will be 0 that means we can found a one subsequence 1 over n so what is the limit point of this limit point is 0 which is the part of the domain so therefore yes g is my constant look at the last option again they are talking about the g but function is defined on the n so what is the g of n f of n f of n plus 1 since both the values are same this value is my 0 that means g of n is my 0 what is the limit point of g so limit point of this is my infinity which is not the part of this domain so it is not constant but he said there is a constant function so this option is cancel a and c are my correct option Look at this next one again they are talking about the constant so we can apply the same trick to solve this f is my entire function it is given to you which of the following statement is my correct statement okay f is a constant if the range of this set is contained in a is contained in the in straight line okay uh, okay now the limit point concept is not applicable so it means you have to prove f is the entire it is given to you if you prove it is a bounded then it means it's a constant or you can prove either the u or v is my bounded fine or you can prove that it has a count it it omits more than one point it omits more than one points then it is a constant like in the earlier i told you this example fine it omits more than more than values which has less than of 10 so either of the way we can solve it now you can see about that f you want to prove the range is contained in the straight line so what is the range of this c to c so it's a complete line what is that range is contained in the straight line so any of the straight line i can say here may which may or may not pass the horizon so what is the point of this this is a straight line fine so how many point they can skip it has skip skip more than two points because how many points on this line infinitely many points so or you can say the range of the f is the contained in the straight line what does it means the range of the f is my bounded fine it means f is my bounded and entire what does it means 
if it is bounded and entire it means f is my constant function so you can see first option is correct option fine look at the second option f is constant if f has uncountably many zero uncountably many zero okay okay very simple can you tell me what kind of the function f of z if this has uncountably many zeros uncountably many zeros fine so always remember the only function the only function which has this property is zero function f of z is my zero is the only function which is my which is which has uncountably many zeros so what is that this is my constant function so f is zero which is my constant function so it means f is a constant is my also correct answer or you can see as i mentioned in the earlier non constant entire function has always countably many zeros fine this is the result i have mentioned you earlier so what is the opposite of this non constant entire function has countably many zero what is the opposite of this uncountably many zeros has a constant function so uncountably many zero is a constant but remember only function which has uncountably many zero is only f of z is zero which is a constant function now look at this third option what is given to you a function is a constant if f is bounded on all those z such that real part of z that means x is my negative so very simple if i say f is my u plus iota v and z is my x plus iota v so i can simply take this is e raised to power z fine which is the entire function now f is a bounded so if i take the absolute value of this it will be e raised to power x e raised to power of this so it will be e raised to power x now if f is bounded on this one so if x is less than 0 if x is negative what is the domain, what is the answer of this is it a bounded function if x is yes this is a bounded function whenever x is my less than 0 because it goes to the zero as x is approaches x approaches minus infinity it goes to the zero so it means it is a bounded function so if f is my bounded plus f is my entire what does it means it means f is my no so f is bounded f is bounded if f is not bounded on the complete domain f is bounded only on this but you can see this is my non constant function so it means this option is cancelled look at the last portion if real part of the f real part of the f that is u is bounded you can see the domain is not given it means u is bounded on the complete domain so as i mention you if f is my entire function f either the u or the v is by bounded it implies f is constant so that means d a b d r my correct option look at this another one again this is the my entire function which of the following is satisfied has a simple zeros what is the meaning of the simple zero is f of iota k is my zero but f dash of iota k is my non zero then which of the following statement is true as a simple zeros he said n is my greater than 1 i can simply take n is my 1 fine so what is my f of z if n is 1 it is a a1 z plus a0 this is my here fine now we can see whether this will satisfy these two properties or not what is the f of iota k is a a1 iota k plus a0 definitely it will not be zero because for some it will be for some so clearly say this will not be zero if i choose a0 is my 1 a1 will be my say 0 1 
so clearly say this is my non zero so it means this property is not hot look at the second one if i start with the iota k it will be a sin 2 pi iota z so it means 2 pi iota iota square is my minus k so it will be minus a sin 2 pi k with what is the k k is my integer so sin of 2 pi k is always 0 first property satisfied look at the derivative what is the f dash of z is 2 pi iota a cos 2 pi iota z so if i substitute this value at iota k 2 pi iota k cos of 2 pi k iota square is a cos square is minus 1 this is a non zero cos of 2 pi k is not, not equal to 0 so it means this is a correct option similarly if you look about this one what is the f of iota k b cos 2 pi this is my iota square is a minus k minus 1 over 4 i can take minus as a common cos is my positive so if i multiply them is a 2 pi k plus pi over 2 fine or you can say it's a 4k plus 1 pi over 2 cos of 4 pi plus 1 4 pi 4k plus 1 pi over 2 can it be 0 you can see this is a is a odd number it's a multiply is a odd number so it definitely it is my 0 fine and what is the f dash of z if i take the derivative it will be my sine of 2 pi iota z minus 1 over 4 and the constant part is 2 pi iota b what is the f dash of iota k so this is the constant we don't bother about this is a 2 pi it is my iota square is a minus k minus 1 over 4 so again it is my sine of 4k plus 1 pi over 2 so clearly say this is a non zero if i simply take k is my integer k is my say 0 so then it's a sine pi by 2 is a non zero so that means this is also the correct option look at the last option so f of iota k e raised to power c iota k so it's clearly non zero because i can return this is as a cos ck plus iota sine ck Fine. If I say k is my uh, k is my one, so definitely this is my non-zero. So this is complete a non-zero. So these options are my B and C are my correct answers. Look at this another one. F is my here. Firstly, we can see yes, it's a constant is given to you, so we can apply this lecture concept on this. F is my analytic functions over the open disk minus one to plus one is a zero. The range contain, so it contain all those minus infinity to 0. That means only for the positive axis. Then f is necessary a constant function. f is necessary constant. Okay, so uh, again the limit point concept is not applicable. We have to prove f is given to you entire. Fine. So we have to prove if it is a bounded. Fine then it will be here okay we will look about the other option there exist he said there exists so you have to provide the one counter example for this there exists some g such that g is my square root of f fine there exists analytic function can you think about any of the function which is my apart from this negative it means always a positive I can simply take z raised to power 4 fine it is always satisfied here and what is my g corresponding to this g is my z square and again you can see this is an analytic function z square is an analytic function over the domain minus infinity to here because this is a negative but this is always a z square now you can see this is my analytic function so there exists we, he said there exists so yes there exists such that g is my square root so that's the correct option f is necessary constant function we can see this is a polynomial fine but he said necessary polynomial is a constant function this is not true 
there exists again he said there exists a function g such that real part of the g is my greater than equal to 0 and g is my square root of f you can see if i simply take f square root real part is my greater than 0 uh, if i simply take okay if i simply take g f is my ninth a constant function fine because of the word is necessary that's why this is cancelled so if i simply take g is my 9 f is my 9 so what is the g g is my plus minus 3 but he said there exists not always it means we can define a g of z is my plus 3 so what is the real part of g of z plus 3 which is greater than 0 so yes this is also the correct statement there exists a g a real part is my negative and g is my square root of f same example you can see if i simply what is the plus minus so if i take this is my minus 3 which is less than 0 real part and yes this is also the analytic because this is a constant function every constant function is analytic function so this is also the right answer a b c sorry b c d are the right answer of this problem okay f is my non constant entire function you always think about here which of the following property is possible for z first of all if f of z is my e raised to power z so clearly say real part is not equal why if this is my here what is the real component so u is my e raised to power x cos x v will be my e raised to power x sin y so clearly say sorry it's a sin y cos y clearly say u is not equal to v so first option is cancel f of z is less than 1 so again what is the absolute value of this if i simply take it will be my e raised to power 2x into 1 it is e raised to power x which is not less than of 1 so it means this option is also cancel out imaginary part is always less than 0 what is the imaginary part is v what is the v is e raised to power x sin y can it be always less than 0 no if i simply take z is my uh, imaginary part. if i simply take y y is my pi over 3 fine so this number is my positive x can be anything because exponential can never be negative e of x so this is always positive this is always positive this can never be negative so it means this is also so only option is my uh, d is the correct option for d, which is the remaining that's the right answer look at this another one f is my entire function consider a set a which satisfied this condition then again a constant function is given to you so we can apply this method a is given to you collection of all those z such that nth derivative will be my 0 for some it is not for all it's for some can you think about any of the example any of the consider here which is the entire and nth derivative is 0 a very simple is a polynomial fine so clearly say the second derivative is my 0 third derivative is my 0 so we can say for some positive integers n so n is my 2 satisfied is it a constant it is not constant fine so f is a constant function cancel out if a is uncountable when it is uncountable clearly say f is not a constant satisfied look at these two options if a is equal to c a is equal to c means this function satisfied for all the c if a is equal to c what does it mean what does it mean if a is equal to c it means this value is satisfied for all those z in the c fine so what is the meaning of that if i consider h of z is my 0 what is the meaning of that 0 is my 
root of this h fine so what is the meaning of that in this case you can see this function has uncountable it has uncountable many zeros point fine we can see if f is a simple zero what does it means it means f of z is my zero but f dash is my non zero but you can see it is nth derivative at the z is zero it means it has uncountable many zero because z is my c what does it means if f is my uncountable many zeros what kind of the function you have what kind of the function you have it is a how many uncountable function it is this function is my zero as i told you in the last previous example the only function which is uncountable many zero is is zero function so if nth derivative will be zero what is means it is my polynomial fine so f is my polynomial is the right answer remember here zero z is the zeros of f of the n not the f z so f of n has uncountably many zeros it means the only function which has uncountably many zero is constant so f of n is my zero it means z is polynomial so again if a is my uncountable that means a is my c which is a same option so a and c are my correct answers okay look at this one p is given to be complex number q is given to be here if this so there is no restriction on the n i can choose n is my one so what is the statement becomes p of z is z plus a0 what is the q of z is a one n is my one so it is a a0 so one plus a0 of z if p of z is my less than one what does it means it means this is less than equal to 1 fine now we can see what is my p of z it is i can see this number is less than plus of here when this number will be less than of less than or equal to 1 the only possible is whenever z is less than 1 it is already given to you this number is already less than equal to 1 so this number is less than of 1 or you can say this is 1 plus a not so this number is less than equal to 1 only when mod of a not is my zero fine otherwise it can never be less than of the one it will be less than of one point something so it means a zero will be my zero fine if a zero is my zero what is my p p is my z what is my q q is my one now look at the options q is less than equal to 1 so you can see what is my here it is less than or equal to 1 because equality is satisfied so this is the correct option q is a constant polynomial you can see q is a constant polynomial satisfied and i take one so what is the p is this option said p of z is z raised power 1 you can see here for all this satisfied p is my constant polynomial but it is a is it a constant polynomial no it is not a constant polynomial so right answer is a b and c are the right answer you can see because there is no restriction on the n so i can simply take n is 1 okay look at this one f is a holomorphic function in the open disk of here so look at the option is not dependent on the z not so i can simply take z not is my c so this function becomes nth derivative at the point 0 is convergent uniform fine it is given to you as a converges uniform so if you look about that a uh, series convergent uniformly you have to apply the amen test fine so this is the nth derivative i can simply take a function is e raised to power a z fine then what is the nth derivative of this is a raised to power n e raised to power z so if i sub e raised to power a z now if i substitute this value 
what will happen here this is summation n is my 0 so it is when it's a 0 e raised to power 0 1 here so what is that this is a gp series when it will be convergent when you can take mode of a is less than 1 so there is no restriction on the a i can choose a is my half so it means my function will be half of z so therefore if i choose any of the function who is satisfied this property like of this so it satisfied my this property now is it a constant wrong is it a polynomial wrong is it a real number no because z is my complex number it is not so the only left option is my c is the right answer so you can easily extend it to the entire form look at this another one f is given to the entire function fine f is a polynomial if okay f is my entire your targets to prove is the polynomial look at that what is given to you infinity means pole at which point infinity so it means the singularity at infinity is pole so if the function is entire plus function is singularity at pole what does it means it means f is my polynomial that's the simple tips i already gave you so this is my correct option look at this one what does it means at infinity is a m it means f has for some m if i choose m is my one it means it has removable singularity fine if it is a removable singularity at infinity what does it means f is polynomial so this is also correct what is the last option what is given to you this implies for sufficiently large and for some n if i choose n is my one it means this number is here which is nothing but my bounded fine if it is a bounded if it is a analytic if it is a bounded it is a entire it means this is a constant and every constant function is also a polynomial so this is also the right option look at this one for any a for any a so i assume a is my zero fine f of z this is summation a n z raised to power n is a power series about the here then a n is zero for at least one n okay can you find the relation of this a n with this function this is the nth derivative divided by n factorial and the center is my zero so you can say the center is here so can you think any of the function which is my analytic and whose a n is zero for at least one or oh, very simple i can simply take any of the polynomial fine or instead of this i can simply take as sine of z fine any of the analytic function so you can see the first derivative is cos z so a1 at the point 0 is so what is the my a1 so cos 0 is 1 over 1 is a non zero what is the second derivative is minus sin z so clearly say a2 is my 0 and he said for at least 1 n i got n is my 2 so what is the meaning of that is it but it is yes f is my but it is not a polynomial can there exist for any a if yes i can expand this series as if as if here so that means it's a polynomial so all are my correct options for this example look at this one so whether yes is a constant so we can solve like this way d is open unit is center in my here fine 1 2 minus 1 f real is a power series f is a constant if f okay this is the tips here f is constant if remember if f and 
f dash both are my analytic then you can easily say f is my constant so you can see f is the real f is a power series f is already given to you as the entire function so one property is already given f is a constant if if i assume f bar f complex conjugate is also analytic what does it means f is a constant this is a correct statement u of half is greater than of this okay do you think that any of the term in the complex analysis which results with the greater than or less than that is my maximum or minimum fine what is the maximum or minimum said if you prove u of a is greater than u of z then then you can say f is my constant by only if this a is belongs to my domain because it's a greater than so we can say by using the maximum modulo principle if it is a less than sign fine if i say then we are applying the minimum modulo principle then again you will get a constant so only we have to prove whether half is belongs to the d so clearly say half is my here which is a part of the domain so what is the meaning of that with the help of maximum modulo principle f is constant fine okay look at the first firstly fourth part what is that this is nothing but first derivative because it's a second so it is a zero what does it means whose first derivative is a zero f is my constant then only it will be the zero so you can see this is also correct option look at this third option the collection of all those n such that an will be my infinite again i can simply take my sin of z first derivative is cos z second derivative is minus sin z third derivative is minus cos z fourth derivative is plus sin z and so on fine now what is the an is i can as i mentioned in the last example i can return this what is the center is center is my zero so clearly say what is the a1 which is non zero a2 sin zero is a zero a3 non zero a4 zero and so on so what is that the set what is the meaning of set is 2 4 an 2 4 6 and here what is that it's a collection of 2n where n is my natural number uh, n is my integers so what is that this is my infinite set so this function will satisfy this property is it a constant function no it is not constant function so this option is cancel a b d are my right answers look at this another one f is my entire function again you can see a constant is given to you such that the jacobian is symmetric when this matrix will be symmetric when u of y is v of x fine but it is already given that is a entire function so what is the meaning of the cauchy riemann equation u of x is v of y and u of y is minus v of x now based on this result and based on this result what you conclude u y is my zero v x is my zero fine now if u y is my zero what does it means u either is a constant or a function of already f is given to you i can say g a function of x fine on the other hand if v of x is zero it means either v is my constant or a fun fun g i call as a h a function of y now based on this result if both are my constant either of them if i assume g is my u is my gx v is my h of y what is the u of x u is my function of the g uh, u can can they are equal when they are not it means g dash of x it must be h dash of y when they are equal 
दे आर इक्वल ओनली वेन जी एक्स एंड एच वाई आर माई पोलोनोमियल्स ऑफ डिग्री वन वाई बिकॉज इफ आई से जी ऑफ एक्स इज एक्स प्लस ऑफ ए और ए वन एच ऑफ वाई इज माई वाई प्लस ए टू देन ओनली द डेरिवेटिव आर सेम बट इफ यू कंसिडर एज ए एक्स केयर देन डेफिनेटली डेरिवेटिव आर माई नॉट सेम सो इट मीन्स देर आर टू केसेस इधर बोथ आर माई कॉन्स्टेंट फाइन और नाउ यू कैन सी इफ इट इज अ पॉलोनोम सो वट इज अ मैक्सिमम डिग्री मैक्सिमम डिग्री इज लेस दैन और इक्वल टू वन इफ मैक्सिमम डिग्री इज लेस दैन इक्वल टू वन डेफिनेटली एफ इज अ पोलोनोमियल एफ इज नेसेसरी अ कॉन्स्टेंट इज इट नेसेसरी अ कॉन्स्टेंट एफ इज इज ओके एफ इज नेसेसरी इट इज नॉट नेसेसरी कॉन्स्टेंट इट कैन बी अ पोलोनोमियल ऑफ डिग्री वन इफ आई सिंपली से u is my x plus one, v is my y plus two. Then clearly say what is that? Is a u y is my one, v y is my uh, u of y is zero, v of y zero. It's a symmetric, but it is not necessary a constant. What is a f is? If I take this value, substitute here, u plus it's my x plus iota y, one plus iota two. It means Z plus constant, so it is not a necessary constant. F is a polynomial of degree strictly greater than one. So what will happen if I simply take a function is my Z square? So what is the real component is x square minus y square. Imaginary component is two y two x y. So what is that? If I substitute here, u of x two x, u of y minus two y. v of x 2y v of y is v of y is my 2x so clearly says they are not same these are only same when y is equal to 0 but we can choose a is my 3 then definitely they are not same so the right answer is a and b are my correct options of this problem fine so if you can clearly say if v this is my here then this is my u this is my v so because of this you can see whether all these properties satisfy you can simply say u of y is zero satisfied cauchy riemann equation satisfied so these are right answers okay now few more questions are there f is my entire then again you can see the some constant is given to you imaginary part is my greater than or equal to zero what does it means it is my bounded fine bounded below or bounded above f is a entire function f is a bounded function what does it means f is my constant fine so f is my constant here if f is constant what does it means u plus iota v is my constant fine what does it means v is v and u both are my constant fine so real part of f that is a u is a constant function f is necessary to be a zero that's wrong because i can assume f is constant is say 4 it's also the constant but it is a here f dash is a non zero constant so what is the f dash f dash is always zero but he said non zero so this option is also cancel a and b are my correct answers for this problem Look at this one. F is given to be my entire function. Real part of F, real part of the F, that is a U is bounded. So what is the meaning of that? If U is my bounded, what does it means? F is constant. Fine. F is entire. F U is bounded. F is constant. If F is constant, it means U plus iota v is my constant. when it will be my constant if u and v both are my constant so this is my v is my constant again f is necessary zero that's again a wrong option i can again choose as f of z is my 7 which is not a zero f dash is my non zero constant so what is the f dash is always zero so if f dash is always zero it means it is a non zero constant is a wrong option a and b are my correct answers Look at this last question. 
f is given to the entire function f is my entire function then is a bounded then u and then f is constant f is constant if what is the first part is u is my bounded if u is bounded f is entire it is a constant is a constant f v is my bounded so if v is bounded f is entire f is also constant u plus v is my bounded u plus v is my bounded fine so if u plus v what is that's clear if u plus v is my bounded it means clearly say f is my bounded why as i mentioned you what is that remember in the earlier case i told you like of this or a of u is my so what does it means what does it means it means u plus v is either less than equal to k or greater than so it means i can take a is one b is one so that means this is a bounded implies f is my bounded u square plus v square is bounded that means u square plus v square is my less than or equal to say k then your target is to check whether this is bounded or not can you think how you can correlate f with the u square if i start from here what is the modulus of this you say u square plus v square u square plus v square is less than equal to k root k so the, what is the meaning of that mod of f is less than equal to some constant called as a m what does it means f is bounded if f is my bounded f is my entire f is bounded that means f is my constant again f is my bounded so it means f is entire it means f is my constant so that means all these four options are my correct answers for this problem so i hope you can learn the various shortcut tricks to solve this problem we will see the next lecture on the schwartz lemma or again on the complex analysis till then you can simply like share and comments on my video best of luck students happy learning.